This iconic American media and entertainment company is famous for some of the most recognizable and enduring characters in the 20th and 21st centuries. Although Marvel Entertainment has essentially cemented themselves as the premier superhero movie and show producer over the past few decades, DC has not been far behind. Welcome back to Luxury Express. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how DC Comics became a billion dollar business. If you haven't already, make sure to click the subscribe button and tap the notification bell to get notified of our latest videos. The World's Most Expensive Comic Book DC may not hold the title for the highest grossing superhero movie, but they are the owners of the most expensive comic book in the world. Published in 1938, DC's action comic number one is responsible for the introduction of Superman. Back then, 200,000 original copies were produced, however, less than 100 are said to be in existence today. In fact, in 2011, Nicolas Cage sold a copy of Action Comic No. 1 on eBay for $2.16 million. In 2014, another copy was sold on eBay for $3.2 million, having started on a low price of just $0.99 cents and jumping to $1.6 million within just two hours. The success of DC Comics was propelled by the introduction of Superman, followed by Sandman and Batman, which was during the golden age of comics. Although most people know DC Comics for their top-notch comic characters, few people know that DC stands for Detective Comics. The company adopted the name DC Comics from its popular Detective Comics series published in 1937 to 2011. The company's most significant issue was number 27, printed in 1939, which was responsible for the introduction of Batman. DC Comics has captured the attention of so many people all over the world and has even encouraged people to exploit a creative site that was not very popular back then. With all this success, there is one man who made this all possible. The founder of Detective Comics Founded in 1934 by Malcolm Wheeler Nicholson, DC Comics is undoubtedly the biggest and the oldest comic book company in the United States. Malcolm Wheeler Nicholson was a pulp magazine writer and is considered the link between popes and comics we enjoy today. Malcolm was raised in an iconoclastic, intellectual household where rumors have it, his family entertained guests such as Theodore Roosevelt. Malcolm's environment growing up was the outdoors, specifically the Washington, Oregon area, and was raised riding horses. In 1917, he joined the United States Cavalry and during his military career, went to several outposts including Japan, Mexico, the Philippines, Mongolia, and Russia. According to Malcolm, he chased bandits on the Mexican border, fought fevers, and played polo in the Philippines, led a battalion of infantry against the Bolsheviks in Siberia, helped straighten out the affairs of the army in France, and commanded the American force in the Rhine. This experience opened up his mind to other cultures and activated his imagination to start designing some of his first concept of what a superhero is. He began ghostwriting after writing a few military novels leading to one of his first superheroes, Bill Barnes, Air Adventurer. Upon leaving the army, Malcolm went on to become a writer for pulp magazines where he adapted several stories that he had written into a comic strip. He started a newspaper syndicate in 1925 where he tried selling his comic strips but unfortunately failed to do so. Later on, Malcolm took inspiration for some of the earliest comic magazines like Famous Funnies and founded National Allied Publication in 1934 and on January 11, 1935, New Fun Comics, his first magazine, went mainstream. He didn't know it at the time but this was the start of something great. As opposed to his competitors, Malcolm's magazine primarily focused on original and whole new comic strips, most of which were written by Malcolm himself. Being new in the business, Malcolm's company struggled, forcing him to go into business with the printer as well as the distributor of spicy pulp magazine, Harry Donfield. With the help of Harry, Malcolm was able to work on his second magazine, New Comics, along with relaunching new fun comics and more fun comics. In 1937, Malcolm, along with Jack Leibowitz, who is Harry's accountant, created Detective Comics Inc. and published Detective Comics. Both Leibowitz and Harry pressured Malcolm to let them run the business part of the company because of his financial troubles. However, Malcolm declined. Donfield then sent Malcolm and his wife to Cuba for a business trip and declared the company bankrupt while they were gone in order to purchase the company themselves. Once completed, 
Malcolm was removed from the company just a few months before publishing Action Comics, which is the birthplace of Superman, his fourth magazine. And much to Malcolm's dismay, this was a turning point for DC Comics. The Rise of DC Comics Arguably the face of the franchise, Superman was created in 1933 by high school students Joe Schuster and Jerry Siegel. Siegel and Schuster had tried for years to find a publisher for their Superman character, conceived initially as a newspaper strip. And here's a fun fact, Superman was originally a bald madman who used his telepathic ability to wreak havoc on humanity. With no luck on evil Superman, they turned him good and managed to sell the character in 1938 to DC Comics. During the Silver Age of Comics, DC managed to introduce several superheroes including Batman in 1939 and Wonder Woman in 1941. The universe also featured well-known supervillains who opposed the superheroes such as Lex Luthor and the infamous Joker. Batman was first published in March 1939, issue number 27, and would later become the star of the show pushing Superman aside. Sorry Superman. Wonder Woman was created by William Marston and published her character in All-Star Comics issue number 8 in 1941. Interestingly enough, Wonder Woman's qualities and appearance were based on Marston's wife and mistress, and it was Marston's wife who came up with the strong female superhero. Some would say this was a pivotal point in history because of the impact Wonder Woman had on the women's right movement at the time. Although superhero comic books popularity started going down throughout the 1950s, comic books featuring Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman remained popular. During this period, DC canceled the titles of other superheroes and concentrated more on books that involved more westerns, science fiction, and crime drama. DC reintroduced superhero comics in 1965 while under editor Julius Schwartz. During this time, Carmine Infantino and Robert Kaniger created an updated version of the 1940s comic hero The Flash. This ushered in the golden age of comics, and for years that followed, there were new versions of classic comic characters like Hawkman, Cyborg, Aquaman, and the Green Lantern. During this period, superheroes regained their popularity, leading DC's rival Marvel Comics to return to the superhero genre. In 1966, a Batman TV series starring Burt Ward and Adam West premiered on ABC with the whole genre of superheroes benefiting significantly from the show's success. In 1977, the company officially adopted the name DC Comics and today, it is owned by Time Warner and acts as a Warner Brothers Entertainment subsidiary. The Billion Dollar Threshold During the 1990s, the comic book popularity began to decline. As a result, the industry started a new approach and with it came different lines that were intended to appeal towards a more mature audience. They also took a big gamble featuring the death of some of the key and most popular characters such as the death of Superman. DC Comics then launched the superheroes of their industry into the DC Extended Universe which revolutionized their world of comic books and the popularity began to once again grow. By constantly diversifying and evolving the DC brand, their characters regained attention and have continued to grow in popularity through critically acclaimed movies, theme parks, and product partnerships to ensure their continued presence as a huge part of American and world culture. The net worth of DC Comics isn't readily available. However, we can estimate the company's net worth based on a few factors. First, as one of the biggest comic book companies in the world, they sell millions and millions of copies each year, the popularity of which then leads to massive licensing revenue and a hefty sum from retail sales. Batman is the most licensed of DC characters and is believed to be worth around $28 billion in retail revenue alone since the character's inception in 1939. Second, movie sales. DC Comics has enjoyed massive box office revenues over the years. In the last 5 years, the critically acclaimed DC movie franchise has grossed an estimated $4 billion. The Future of DC Films DC has had many failures and successes over the years with their movies. So, in May of 2016, they decided to get together to create the DC Extended Universe in order to compete with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Since the dawn of the DCEU, the films Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, Justice League, Aquaman, Shazam, Joker, and Birds of Prey have been released. While some of these films did not perform well, the recently released Snyder Cut of the Justice League movie from 2017 received such tremendous praise that fans began clamoring for the restoration of the famed director's vision for the DCEU. 
Although Warner Brothers has no plan to do so, the demand for more films is clearly there. Fortunately, there are other films planned for the future such as Batman, Black Adam, and The Flash all scheduled for a 2022 release. In addition, director James Gunn's version of The Suicide Squad was released and instantly became a big hit. So there you have it. DC Comics is undoubtedly a top-notch and iconic comic book in the United States, having produced different top-notch comic characters. Although Marvel is said to be outshining DC Comics, the company remains a billion-dollar business thanks to its consistency in producing unmatched superheroes. Do you think their success will continue? And what films are you looking forward to the most? Share with us in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed today's content, check out this related video to see more. Until next time.